Indian sisters had no super quality oil paint, no illuminescent light, and yet they gave life to their paintings in Ajanta Caves. Upon my visit to Ajanta Caves, I was totally spellbound to see the marvelous, the magnificent carvings, the colors, the shapes, the intricacies, and of course, the delight. Each painting in Ajanta Caves spells a masterpiece and mastercraft. Today on Not Sub, artist Ms. Nalini Bhatt will graciously share with us Ajanta Caves, a heritage site of India. Hi friends, welcome to Utsav. This is Nalini. As you all know, we bring very unique shows on Utsav. Today, we are celebrating Ajanta Cave paintings. Recently, I visited uh, these caves in Maharashtra, India. I was totally in awe of this place. The exquisite beauty was surreal. It's called one of the seven wonders of India. I said to myself, no wonder it's called one of the seven wonders. From 2nd century BC to 6th century AD, the life of Buddha along with his previous births and also the contemporary lifestyle was painted rather than written. The surface used was a single monolithic rock stretching far and wide and the tools used were just chisel and hammer. The pigments, the materials used were all available in the mountainous areas like the rocks, the powdered minerals, vegetable dyes, resin, the glue from the tree and hay, lime wash, everything was available locally. With just six pigments, our ancestors played on the rock surface and created sheer magic. After several centuries, the sound of the hammer faded slowly and the paints from the brushes dried and these caves unfortunately sank into obscurity until a British hunter discovered them accidentally in 1819 and since then Ajanta Caves have become one of the most famous tourist places in India. Inspired by these Ajanta murals, I created a lot of works myself and I would like to share some of them with you. Let's start with this painting, which represents a cross-section of the interiors of Ajanta. This is not done on rocks, obviously it's done on canvas with modern acrylic paints, but um, it's done in an abstract style. And this is one painting I personally like a lot because it has a 3D effect. I would like to share this painting next. This is a um, mixed media or collage, but what I would like to focus is on this figure here. This is very intricately painted in Ajanta Caves. Here the king is explaining to the queen of his impending gloom because he's going on an exile and he's trying to console the queen with a glass of wine. This is done with the uh, printouts glued on to the canvas which was already painted by me before and I have finished it, finished it off with spray glue. Next I have this painting. In Ajanta it's amazing that people from all strata of life are painted. 
there are princesses, maids, servants, musicians, dancers. This is one of the most famous paintings of Ajanta. We tend to think that maybe um, they are life-size paintings, but they are one of many thousands of paintings and the tour guide always holds up his torch and focuses on these small paintings and what we are amazed to find are the intricate and delicately painted um, details on these paintings. This painting has a dark princess who is accepting golden lilies from her maid. Just take a look at the strands of pearl she is wearing, her elongated eyes and the blue um, tikka, she is, she is blue um, ornament she is wearing on her forehead. Actually blue was the only color which was imported because uh, lapis lazuli or intense blue color was got from semi-precious stone and uh, Maharashtra, India did not have it at that time and it was imported. So we see less of blue and uh, more of other colors. So it's um, very nice to see one blue uh, ornament uh, found on a painting and um, I was really uh, amazed to see um, blue here and there but it added a lot to the existing colors. This is a sculpture I designed um, inspired by a beautiful sculpture I saw in a Mumbai hotel. Ajanta caves are in a horseshoe shape. So this is done with various um, materials like uh, handmade paper and uh, everything is glued on to a tile. I have even used dried up orange peel and the figure you see is the same princess, the dark princess. Talking about the princess, I designed this uh, jewelry, piece of jewelry. I don't know if the camera is able to catch it. It's a face of this uh, dark princess with her jewelry. I made it into a pendant. When it comes to the hairstyles, Ajanta has absolutely stunning hairstyles and the designs of their costumes of uh, all these princesses and even the maids is simply awesome. It could be the envy and inspiration of modern designers. Um, so I designed this dress. This shows a nymph, an apsara with symbols in her hand and the hairstyle. My hairstyle actually uh, resembles this painting. It's very easy to fix this hairstyle, you just twist your portions of your hair and pin it up at the back and fix a hair piece and just bring the curls to the front. If you wear it to a wedding or a party, I'm sure you will turn a lot of heads because this is very stunning at the same time, not uh, very overdone. Uh, and you'll find examples of these hairstyles um, in plenty. This is an absolutely organic painting I did on a piece of rock like this. I have used charcoal to draw the eyes and the lips and then the dark hair. But for the cheeks and the face I have used carrot juice, beetroot juice, turmeric. So I think I have come little close to what our ancestors did with organic materials and vegetable dyes to do these paintings. The aesthetic beauty of the costumes, the ornaments, the dresses people are wearing is simply unrivaled. You see a woman with full sleeves blouse, round neck, square neck, whatever we have today they had those days, people wearing scarves around their necks, wearing very nice caps, headbands. Actually, this um, Apsara is famous for the cap she is wearing. Um, the tour guide always points out to that. High degree of craftsmanship 
was employed in painting these beautiful, beautiful works. The long sweeping brush strokes, fluidity of the lines, the subtle gradation of the colors are all a mystery to the modern painters even to this day. Apart from what meets the eyes in Ajanta Caves, what is baffling the archaeologists is the high technology used because it was carved inside out from lithic rock. Archaeologists are still not sure about the exact technique they used. They are thinking that first a coat of paint was applied with all the raw materials and then that was allowed to dry and then mud mixed with rock minerals, powdered rocks and minerals was applied and finally a lime wash was given. Even though uh, these Ajanta ruins are um, unfortunately becoming more and more uh, destroyed by you know people taking photograph photographs of these paintings, we cannot see them in full glory yet what remains is simply ethereal. And another interesting fact which is really puzzling the archaeologists is that they had precise knowledge of mathematics because out of the 39, um, 31 uh, caves or 29 caves, um, you know, there, there is a um, controversy about how many caves are there, but out of the 29 caves, in two caves, 19 and 26, winter solstice and summer solstice are um, used on these mornings of these two days, the sunlight hits through the window precisely on the stupa of Buddha. And that is simply amazing that people had this knowledge so many centuries ago. Today's program was a tribute to our ancestors who took the raw power of nature and transformed it into something infinitely beautiful and ethereal, surreal. And it was a homage to our forefathers who created sheer magic. It's our treasure to cherish. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Thank you for watching Utsav. This is Nalini. Bye-bye. Beautiful, locally talented artist, Mrs. Anshu Sharma. Today